So hey there, uh, thanks very much for checking out my videos here on YouTube. I do greatly appreciate it. Um, we're doing kind of a quick little 15 minute little quick view on what I'm up to. So I'm currently working on that new car that I just received, which was a 2014 Chevy Cruze. So I'm gonna go ahead and I, I needed to do the thermostat on this. Now the thermostat actually isn't broken. It does work, it opens and closes just as it should. The dilemma is that there's a little preheater and a sensor built into this particular car, again, to keep with more modern emission standards. That's the only excuse I could think that they would put it there for. But the little sensor is, is, is gone. Now, fortunately, the uh, little sensor is incredibly cheap, but it's embedded in the actual housing of the actual thermostat. So... Long story short, means that you need to replace the housing to get the thermostat. And if you're going to replace the housing, you're replacing the thermostat as well. So you're replacing a known good part with another known good part to replace a faulty part. Now there's a couple good videos down below on how to diagnose the fault. And I'll, I'll leave a link there because they're more mechanical and they'll go through the whole process. I've gone through it and I've pulled out my little voltmeter and I've checked and yes, I do have a, a faulty sensor. The car does run fine. Uh, the dilemma is it does throw an engine code, and the engine code comes up and says, hey, there's a problem. It says it's a uh, high voltage on uh, thermostat, and the sensor's an issue, and blah, blah, blah. So if you've got yourself a little OB2 code reader, um, it's going to come up with that code on this particular car. It means it's just time to replace it. Pretty straightforward. I think it's because they're using a black ABS uh, housing for this. And I think what happens over time, because of the heat of the coolant, in the heat of the engine, there's a variation there. I think you get a spread. So that spread allows the, the plastic or the ABS to expand and shrink a little bit. When it does that, I think it puts a little pressure on the sensor. And I think over time, it just gets shorted out. Essentially, that's what it is. It's not rocket science from that stretch of the imagination. I ordered a part through Amazon. Uh, it ran about $42 for it. It's an aluminum component to match the block which means it'll expand at the same rate. So it would get out of that problem. The dilemma with that is that they sent me the wrong part, which seems to be a trend right now. Um, but I'm gonna tell you, Amazon has some great pricing, and I'm gonna leave a link down below to the second part that shows up, well, third part, because I've already gone through another part as well. So this will be the third part that they're gonna send to see that it fits on this car. Now, again, it's about $40. I think the OEM one's about, in Canada, 120 there's a good savings there to go to an aftermarket. If I go to a jobber part, which is like a, a U, U of Pay store, or if I go to a Canadian Tire or anything like that line, I'm paying about 85. So 42 for an aluminum is, is a pretty good deal with the sensor and the thermostat right there. Today I'm using a, a nice set of tools that I got from, well, strangely enough, thrift shopping. So that's actually from Beyond the Blue Box. That is a good deal, it was $35. And that's a, a Chrome Husky set. So if you're out about looking for a nice ratchet set, I have a, a snap-on set as well from back in the day. Um, I don't like using them on projects because um, they're snap-on tools. Really, they're the princess of tools. Well, they're not, but, um, for little little jobs, I keep this actually in the in the trunk. So this is the one that I like to use. It's just easy and handy. And strangely enough, the actual tool is very good quality. So if you're out there looking for a cheap, portable ratchet set that seems to come with the required tools, sometimes when you go to a motor master, you look and they'll have all these little Allen keys and things that you kind of go. What would I ever need those for? I'm not going to put together an IKEA set, right? You need something for automotive. Look for something that's actually got sockets, extensions, and a few other little things. And I think you can buy these for under $100. I think they're, I got a deal at $35 because it was a, I think probably a store donation, which they do for charities, which is really nice, which is why you should go check out Beyond the Blue Box when you can. I'm still waiting on uh, Turo to come back. Do have some insurance questions for them and my broker is still being a bit of a, a pain about it so again this is just that getting used and getting familiar uh, as a new post uh, what to expect so 
I'm hoping that uh, down the road or in the next week or so, I can give a resolution to that and say, hey, this is the real process to it. And then we can kind of have a, a real 30 minute discussion kind of on the, the live chat end of it. And uh, maybe there's some other questions about economical and how it's uh, used in Turo and, and how to use it as a, as a consumer or as a host. So again, that's coming up. I still have to get this particular vehicle safety. It's insured and plated right now, so it's something I can drive. I do have my regular car as well. My Outlander is out on, on rental, which is kind of nice. I picked this one up way out of my my wheelhouse of what I wanted, uh, mainly because it was a local car, came with the records. It seems to have some really weird, weird little quirks to it, which I think are inherent with a Chevy Cruze. Like for instance, this sensor seems to be a, a common failure point. It's got a little turbo there. This one seems to be nice and strong. He's replaced the catalytic converter. So some of the things have been addressed that are typically a problems with these cars. I don't know how long term it will be as far as a, a tour car is concerned. AC blows cold, interiors, well, it's, it's a 10 year old car, but it's reasonably clean. I'm gonna do a shampoo and get that up to run so it looks, looks decent. It's just at this point, I wanna make it so that Nothing will come up as far as a trouble code. There'll be no maintenance required. Um, it'll be turnkey for the next 20,000, 30,000 kilometers where I don't have to worry too much about it. I'm going to do the, the brakes. They don't need to be done, but it's one of those things where you're handing out to somebody. You want to make sure it's safe. And also the, the cost of pads and rotors on this are fairly reasonable. I'll do a caliper service and make sure everything works properly. So that's, that's kind of the plan with that. And I'm hoping to get that out by the end of the month. And it's the 20th now, so... That gives me 10 days to kind of roll through it. Um, fingers crossed that there's no surprises. Um, but that's what you get into when you get into a, an older, cheaper car. Is that if you're not getting them safety and, and all ready to go, then you're going to have to put a little bit of wrench time in it, a little bit of equity sweat to try, trying to get the car up and running to a standard that works. Now, if you're not a, a host that's handy with tools and doing service work, this probably isn't the category of car you should be looking at. So you might want to go look at something that's two or three years old, something that's lost a little bit of equity. Maybe it's on that lower end, but you still have warranty and a few other things to fall back on. And we'll talk about that later on as far as what is your business approach? What cars are you looking for? What cars am I looking for? As from that, from that standpoint, my hot button on cars are very different than what your hot button would be. So that's just one of those things where no one can say, hey, let's do it this way. It's right. There's this million ways of doing something so today we're going to go ahead and we're going to well reinstall what i took apart on the weekend essentially because i found that the part was wrong so that's a frustrating because like doing the job twice but at the same time i'm doing the job twice so i'm getting experience right as far as that's concerned and it's my own fault i probably should have looked over the the part from amazon a little closer when it arrived when I when it opened up, I was so impressed with the uh, with the finish of the aluminum. It was nice and shiny and pretty. I just started to gaze at it in wonderment, and I didn't realize that it didn't have the actual attachment for the heater hose. And I went, "Well, that's I'm in the job and going. Well, clearly that must be for a Trax or or something, some other GM car that's related powertrain wise to this, because the ad made it very clear that it cross referenced up to this one just fine. That's not the case." So the next one I have coming in um, has a photo of the actual real part and it's gonna go from there, it'll probably work. I can't see it being, well rule of three, the third one has to be okay, right? As far as that's concerned. Only irk on that one that I find is the last one was about $30. The replacement that I gotta get is about 42. It's a $12 spread, which isn't the end of the world. The dilemma is that when you're dealing with Amazon, their returns are pretty straightforward but they make it very clear that it can take up to 30 days to get that refund in your account, regardless whether the, the part or the component has arrived. So really they're hanging on that, to that product. Um, I'm assuming until they clear it, so they know this is faulty, and they're going from there. But uh, again, it's just a, a project underway. Hopefully that helps you out a little bit. Now I'll do a, a 30 minute sit down probably in a couple days or so, and we'll discuss where things are at kind of as they go along and at some point I'd like to go in and, 
and showcase this car and say this is what was done repair wise um, and it's going out on its first rental I've already had a couple folks at work inquiry about it which is kind of nice so I may already have it lined up for a weekly rental or a weekly Wednesday Thursday Friday like a permanent schedule which is great and again it's going to um, to exactly what I anticipated it would go to is someone that just needs reliable transportation to get to and from work from Kitchener out to here right and they've been carpooling and doing the hitchhiking thing and the whole nine yards to get up here so for a vehicle that I'm going to get probably about $30 for on a daily and you're looking to probably run another 11 to $15 for insurance so this one will run under $50 so it'd be able to get to and from work and share it with a buddy I don't mean by sh like drive share I mean somebody's in the passenger seat covering half that's not a bad break as far as that's concerned it's, it's almost cheaper than taking the bus out here so I think that's where that value is going to come from and that's where level expectation is key is it just has to be clean presentable and reliable so in other words no check engine lights everything's current from that standpoint a couple little nicks and scratches not a big deal nobody really cares about that unless they did it right that seems to be the the big issue there so as long as it's documented and you say no there's a little mark here there's a little scratch there they seem perfectly comfortable with that so that's one of those things that as long as you control the expectation of what they're getting into it's not hugely a, a huge hurdle at least from my aspect I, I found so hopefully that's a, a nice little update there for you as far as what I'm doing so far on the car I, again we'll do that 30 minute live I'm expecting an email back from Turo in reference to my insurance hurdles again just being new at the whole thing I might find that I'm in the exact position that I should be maybe I do pay more maybe I don't pay more I don't know we'll find out right and as far as that's concerned it's not the end of the world it's just one of those things that I want to make sure that everything insurance wise is okay and dead on right so I don't have to worry about it so if there is an issue I can say hey you know what I did my due diligence beforehand I verified everything um, everything is correct T's are crossed I's are dotted no issues so when there is a problem I can just go okay we've already worked this through it is a simple process now it's just time and energy to take take care of it and that's really what insurance should be about it should just be a simple little we've got it covered shouldn't be a problem uh, I just want to make sure that everything is, is good from that standpoint and my broker and I'm not going to blame the broker on this one. I was a little irritated to begin with. So maybe on my last videos it sounded that way. I'm not happy with the brokerage. That seems to be the, the, the underlying issue. They keep rotating brokers on me. And I, I got another email saying that that's how their business is run. They basically do it first come, first serve. So they don't assign anybody to a particular client, which means every time I go talk to somebody, it's a whole new ordeal where it's like, what is Turo? What are you talking about? It, it, it's a re-education process with everybody every single time the very first person I had when I was doing the Outlander I already knew about it she was very knowledgeable she even schooled me on it so I was very I guess luck of the draw on that one um, so that's just one of those things that I thought was interesting from that standpoint and then every other, every other person I've talked to so far has been well clueless or even beyond that they're complacent they don't want to go the extra little mile to actually find out what the service is they won't pick up a phone or do a quote so that's where the where it becomes a brokerage issue so that's management that is a problem on their end as far as that's concerned so again I think they've changed hands about a year ago so they're no longer what I describe as a as, a, as an independent or someone who's really thirsty for work I'm, I'm assuming they're they must have numbers and quotas to have to meet you think you'd want to keep your core client base instead of having them migrate and I think uh, if this is what I'm experiencing um, from that end um, it's probably either I'm an unusual little quirk that just kind of comes through and doesn't fit all the boxes or, or it's it's an underlying issue with their business model and it's not my job to go in and say hey guys let's fix this because it, it isn't it's just it's a free market I can go look for a new brokerage and that's probably what I'll end up doing in January. I'll probably end up talking to somebody from Turo. I'll probably end up getting a little bit of a runaround. That's what I'm visualizing. It's coming in my head, right? 
I'm probably just going to say, you know what? I want to deal with economical because I like I like the company. They've been pretty good to me. I haven't had any issues from the insurance aspect of it from that end. I'll just find a referral. I'll say, well, what broker do you deal with? Or what is the most common broker? Because I don't care if I'm, if they're in the GTA and I'm out here, it doesn't make a difference insurance-wise because I'm hardly going to see them. It's going to be emails and I'm not walking in on a Thursday to say, hey guys, how you doing? Here's a cup of coffee. Um, how's my insurance doing? I'm not looking for that, right? So probably I'll end up going into a, a larger brokerage or someone that's a little more tailored to, to Turo down the road. So that's the plan there. I'm going to get to work. Again, thank you very much. I do apologize for the horrible audio and uh, the bad video content because you literally are getting my little uh, Google Pixel 3. So it's an old phone, but I like working with it. Um, I'd love to upgrade, but it's not on the budget. So um, again, down the road, maybe we'll go to a 5 when they get on sale. <laughs> I think they're up to about 7 or 8 now anyways. So it's one of those things where this just does the job, and, and that's all that we're planning to do. And so I do apologize for that. Again, that sit down at the desk is kind of where we talk a, a little more in detail. So again, thank you very much. Uh, have a pleasant and enjoyable day, and we'll talk to you later.